Knicks star Jalen Brunson has agreed to a four-year, $156.5 million extension. All-star this season led New York to the Eastern Conference semifinal. He waited until next season to extend. He would have been eligible to make $113 million more. The New York Knicks just did something that is completely unprecedented. I never would have expected anyone to make this big of a sacrifice. And it changes everything for the New York Knicks and possibly other teams that are trying to construct rosters moving forward. And a lot of it has to do with the new CBA. So before we get to the content, we are on the grind to a million subscribers. This is our second upload of the day and your boys on four hours of sleep. Do me a favor and check to see if you're subscribed and have a notification notifications turned on and now that we get all that out of the way cue the intro making bank on prize picks by playing the WNBA games. I mean, the other night I made $300 and I post all my picks for free onto my Instagram story. And all you have to do to join is go to the link in the description down below and click on the link or download the prize picks app. Use my promo code flight Mike to get up to $100 in a deposit match when you sign up. And thank you prize picks for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? The New York Knicks have been going all in on Jalen Brunson, which is something that I would have never expected once they signed him to a contract during the summer of 2022. Jalen Brunson quickly became one of the best contracts in the entire NBA, earning an average of about $25 million a year. And he quickly outplayed that contract really, really quickly. I mean, in his first season with the New York Knicks, he averaged 24 points per game and six assists per game off of 42% shooting from three. And then this past year, he averaged 29 points per game, nearly seven assists per game off of 40% shooting from three. Jalen Brunson easily became the best player that the New York Knicks ever had since the days of Carmelo Anthony. And it's not like Carmelo Anthony brought tremendous team success with him. Nothing against Melo, I grew up on Melo, but you have to admit so far what Jalen Brunson has been able to do for the New York Knicks far exceeds what Carmelo Anthony was able to do when he was on the New York Knicks. And the Knicks realized with the flexibility that Jalen Brunson gives them, they should go all in on trying to build a team around him. So they immediately brought in some of Jalen Brunson's old buddies trading for Josh Hart in his first season with the New York Knicks at the trade deadline before signing Dante DiVincenzo during the 2023 offseason to a four-year $50 million deal. Dante DiVincenzo would then have his best season of his career with the New York Knicks, averaging 15 points per game off of 40% shooting. The New York Knicks quickly went from one of the biggest laughing stocks in the Eastern Conference to the second best team in the NBA. They kept on adding more and more talent moving on from former franchise cornerstone RJ Barrett and trading him for OG Anunoby at a huge discount towards the end of December. All the Knicks had to do is give up RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and a second round pick to the Raptors, and they got OG Anunoby in return. But then the threat of OG Anunoby potentially leaving came to fruition. This is despite the New York Knicks finishing with a 50 and 32 record and being good enough to be second in the East. The Knicks were in store for a potentially disastrous offseason. I mean, there are so many questions. There's a brand new CBA that completely alters everything. And at this point, I don't need to go into specifics because I read my comments and I know you guys don't like when I consistently explain the tax aprons to you guys, but pretty much if you exceed the tax apron for three seasons, then your 2031 draft pick gets sent to the back of the NBA draft. It's like there's all these crazy restrictions and penalties. So teams are scrambling to figure out the brand new secret formula in constructing their roster. And you've seen some crazy stuff happen so far. I mean, the Los Angeles Clippers offered Paul George a $30 million contract, and they ended up losing him because of this. LeBron James was willing to take a pay cut for the Los Angeles Lakers to sign someone, but no one really cared, and he signed a max contract anyway. The New York Knicks are in a much different situation. In the summer, they went all in once again, completing the Villanova Big Four from the 2016 season, trading a tremendous haul and taking an unprecedented risk to receive Mikel Bridges, Keita Bates-Diop, and a 2020. 
126 second round pick. In order to do this, they gave up Boan Bogdanovich, Shake Milton, four unprotected first round picks going all the way to 2031, and an unprotected pick swap in 2028, top four protected Bucks pick in 2025, and a second round pick. So pretty much, this is the New York Knicks going all in on Jalen Brunson. But there is a huge problem. You see, when you have this much talent on a roster, alongside with Julius Randle, who is also on the New York Knicks for another season and has a player option that expires in 2026, there's a huge question of how do you keep this core group of guys together? You see, there's no question about it. The East is significantly weaker than the Western Conference. If you look at the standings from last year, there's a huge drop-off between the Boston Celtics, the defending champions, and the New York Knicks. The Milwaukee Bucks are a huge question mark. The Cleveland Cavaliers might be able to make up some difference, and I believe in Kenny Atkinson. Maybe the Indiana Pacers could get up there as well. The Philadelphia 76ers made significant moves in the offseason as well. And I would say the Miami Heat are a bit of a question mark. They're always a wild card. Those are your main players to potentially make a deep run in the Eastern Conference. It's not nearly as competitive as the Western Conference is. So the New York Knicks recognized this and went all in. Not only trading for Mikel Bridges, but also retaining OG Ananobi on a crazy five-year, $212.5 million contract, which gives OG Ananobi an annual salary of $42.5 million. So there's a huge question of what they were gonna do with Jalen Brunson. Originally, Jalen Brunson was considering doing something that we've never seen before in NBA history, something that I really didn't think he would do. The man was already getting underpaid for the value he brought to the team, but Jalen Brunson did something that is absolutely insane. So according to Woj, in a largely unprecedented financial concession to give roster flexibility to a contending franchise, New York Knicks All-NBA guard Jalen Brunson has agreed on a four-year, $156.5 million contract extension, which is $113 million less guaranteed than he is eligible to sign for a year from now, his agent Sam Rose of CAA told ESPN on Friday. This is insane. The deal which begins in 2025 to 2026 and will cost Brunson $37.1 million over the next three years comes with a fourth year player option, Rose said, and that would set up Brunson to recoup the $113 million on a four year $323 million max extension in 2028 or a new five year $418 million deal in 2029. And here's the table for this. It's absolutely insane. I mean, take a look at how much Jalen Brunson is currently making with this extension extension versus how much he could be making if he waited until 2025, which means that the New York Knicks save about $37.1 million, which is very convenient considering the fact that Mikel Bridges' contract also expires very soon. I have never seen a sacrifice like this before in NBA history. I mean, yeah, you've seen players take $10 million less or $15 million less. You, you hear stories of Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki taking way less money so they could be on championship teams. But you have to understand, Jalen Brunson is in a completely different situation here. Jalen Brunson was drafted in the second round. He was supposed to be a high-end role player for the Mavericks. He signs a contract with the New York Knicks and his contract is undervalued. And then he decides to sign an extension, which is also undervalued, which if we're being honest, gives him a huge chance of being a New York Knicks legend one day. My mind is blown. And when you read this article, the motivation will just make your jaw drop. Brunson's study of championship organizations and franchise stars like Patrick Mahomes' Kansas City Chiefs, Tom Brady of the New England Patriots, and Derek Jeter for the New York Yankees gave him a blueprint for MVP level players who structure their contracts to give their teams the best chances at sustainable title runs. This is an absolutely legendary move by an NBA player. I mean, Mikel Bridges has two years and 48 million dollars left on his contract so this obviously puts the Knicks in a good situation to extend him but what's funny about this article by Woj is he tries to bring up other instances here like Tim Duncan taking 11 million dollars less than the maximum in 2007 to keep Manu and Tony Parker Kevin Durant taking 10 million less to keep Sean Livingston and Andre Gudala in 2017 and of course my favorite is LeBron James accepted 2.6 million dollars less this year on a 
two year $101 million deal to avoid the second apron for the Lakers. I really am happy to see that there is a player that finally gets it. And the fact that Jalen Brunson's living in state tax heavy New York and deciding to do this is insane to me as well. I can't believe it took players this long to realize, damn, $156.5 million is a lot of money. I mean, sure, it's not nearly as much as the $270 million that I would have gotten. But if I take less money and my teammates are better, that improves my odds at winning a championship in a large market, which also means I'll probably get more sponsorships and I'll be a New York legend. I think this is one of the most intelligent decisions I've ever seen a player make. My favorite team's in the Western Conference and they have no hope whatsoever. Consider me an Eastern Conference Knicks fans going into this season because wow, my mind is blown by this deal. If you're a Knicks fan, let me know in the comment section down below. How do you feel about this? It's gotta be a pretty damn good feeling seeing your best player and your veteran leader taking a pay cut of $113 million. Aside from that, we dropped the video on how everything just changed for Victor Webanyama and the San Antonio Spurs. I'm gonna meet you guys over there. And aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.